important considerations for your birthing plan. This video is a follow-up to a video that I shot a couple of days ago in which I talked about holistic home births. And in that video, I mentioned the term birthing plans. And I had some questions offline about not only birthing plans and considerations uh, for birthing plans, but also how would you know if your baby has a brain injury, an HIE brain injury? So I'm gonna put both of those videos, I'm gonna put both of those questions together into one video. First of all, we're talking about a birthing plan. What is a birthing plan? Essentially, a birthing plan is a written outline of what you want to happen with labor and delivery. That is what it is. That's what it is in its most basic sense. And you have to remember that your birthing plan, it should not be something that is set in stone. It should be able to move and it should have some flexibility with it. Some of the things that you want to include with your birthing plan is going to be where do you want to deliver? And I'm going to get back to that uh, in a little bit. But where do you want to have your delivery? In addition to that, who do you want to be present with you during the process? That's something that you want to take into consideration. And number three, another thing that you may want to think about is do you want medications? All of these types of things you want to include in your birthing plan. These birthing plans, what they can do is they can give your medical providers an outline or a roadmap or a heads up as to what you want to happen with your labor and delivery. Now, when you're thinking about your, your birthing plan, you want to get on this as early as possible. And the reason why we say that is because you want to make sure that there's enough time for your providers to know what you want. And that way you can have questions. If you have questions, you can ask them questions and you can get answers. If they have questions of you, they can ask and get answers. So you want to put it together as early as possible and you want to you, you want to make sure if you can to go over your birthing plan with your providers. Now, in addition to that, I, I talked about location and I, I want to come back. I want to talk about that now because you can have your birthing plan. You, your birthing plan can say whatever you want to say in regards to location. Do you want to have your baby born at home? Do you want your baby to be born at a birthing center? Do you want your baby to be born at a hospital? When you're thinking about these locations and you're outside of a hospital, you want to also make sure that you're taking into consideration what is your status. Like, for example, are you high risk? Are you a high risk mother? Uh, it, is this a, a subsequent pregnancy for you? And in your previous ones, you had uh, complications or you have issues that came up in those pregnancies. You want to make sure that these are things that you also think about when you are putting together your birthing plan and figuring out what is your location. Because if things do arise or if problems do arise, you want to make sure that you're somewhere in which medical help or care can be rendered immediately. And that's why I said, you know, think about are you high risk? Have you had previous complications? All of these types of things are things that you really should take some time and think about and ask questions uh, regarding your providers in regards to these issues. So that's something that you definitely, these are things that you definitely want to take into consideration when you are looking to put together your birthing plan. And finally, the aspect of of signs. One of the common signs that families that they report to us when it comes to their baby suffering an HIE or a traumatic brain injury. The first one is going to be that we hear a lot, a lot of parents, they, they tell us that their baby has suffered seizures. Seizures are extremely common when we're talking about the signs of a potential traumatic brain injury. In addition to that, a lot of families, they will report to us that their baby uh, needs feeding tubes or, or help eating this is also something that is reported a lot, included in this feeding tube aspect. I'm going to also add in here, parents will generally report vision problems or vision issues. They also may even report issues with hearing or challenges with the vision and hearing. These are also common things that are mentioned. And finally, we also have delays delays in reaching certain milestones. This is also something that is related to us a lot by parents when we're interviewing them and we're trying to get a feel as to where the baby is or what are some of the challenges that the baby is, is dealing with. Now, I say all of that, but I wanna also make sure that you understand that your medical professionals are there to actually confirm 
as to whether or not your baby has suffered a traumatic brain injury. So remember, they can do certain types of tests. They can do imaging. There's things that they can do which can confirm as to whether your baby has suffered a, a traumatic brain injury. If you have more questions, maybe you're watching this video today because your baby has suffered a traumatic brain injury, an HIE brain injury, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, and you have questions as to what caused it, how this happened to your baby, there is a telephone number on the screen. Get your cell and give my office a call. We speak with families like yours all the time about these types of issues. And remember, it doesn't cost you any money to initially talk with us about your baby's story and what happened. I just want to remind you that when you do contact my office, when you talk to my secretary, make sure that you pick a good date and a time to get on our calendar and talk with us, a date that you're going to remember uh, and that you have time to talk. That's important, okay? So make sure you pick a good date and time when my secretary asks, uh, talks to you about getting on our calendar. In addition to that, you want to make sure that you provide a good email address because sometimes we will have to correspond with you through email. So we want to make sure that we are sending the information to an email address or an account that you check frequently. And finally, I practice law here in the state of Maryland, and, and sometimes we'll have people who will contact us. They are in the United States, but they're not in Maryland. If that is you, you're in the U.S., but you're not in Maryland, just remember that if, if, if this is something that we think we can assist you with, we have to use what we call co-counsel or local counsel. In other words, a lawyer in your state, that's something that we can look to work to help you with, but I just want to make sure that you understand that co-counsel or local counsel aspect of things if you are not here in the state of Maryland. All right, that's going to be it for today's quick educational video. Again, I'm Marcus Boston, and I'm one of the childbirth injury and medical malpractice lawyers practicing law here in the state of Maryland at Boston Law Group, LLC. We'll talk with you next time. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.